Welcome to Wiki Africa Hour, where Africa's Wikimedians talk to, learn from, and discuss with each other topics they choose. Each session is curated by African Wikimedians to expand Africa's open movement. Today's host is Seslas Obanyaya. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sesla Sobunaya. I'm from Nigeria. I joined the movement in um, 2018, uh, first through the um, Igbo Wikimedia user group. I'm currently an intern at um, Wiki in Africa. I'm excited to be here for the very first um, episode of Wiki Africa Hour. Wiki Africa Hour is a monthly broadcast to support the activities of the Wikimedia movement across Africa, known to of course, some as the Wiki Africa movement. These monthly sessions aim to achieve the following share current updates and highlights of Africa Wikimedia activities, interact with guests, if any, and take questions from community members, promote synergy with the Wiki community by discussing topics, projects, constraints, collaborations, and opportunities. Of course, as um, African Wikimedians, this is your platform. So you could let us know what um, you want to know more about and what you want to hear from or who you want to hear from and what you want to hear about. We'll have guests from time to time. And these guests, of course, their insights will um, contribute to our movement. Today's special guest is um, Catherine Maha. Catherine is a former chief executive officer and um, executive director of the Wikimedia Foundation. She has a background in the field of information and communications and technology and worked in the nonprofit um, and international sectors focusing on the use of technology to empower human rights and international development, mostly the notable ones like um, UNICEF, World Bank, Access Now. Welcome, Catherine. Uh, we are honored to have you. It's so exciting to be here. I didn't realize this is the inaugural vlogcast. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. So, um, Catherine, you officially became the Chief Executive Officer of Wikimedia Foundation in 2016. But what um, had you been doing prior to that? And um, what possibly led you to join the movement? Oh, uh, so prior to being the CEO, I was the Chief Communications Officer and was with Wikimedia for two years. But what brought me to Wikimedia before that was... I don't know, it felt like everything in my life before Wikimedia was lead, leading up to Wikimedia. I had worked in, as you said, nonprofit in, in institutions, international agencies. I'd been at UNICEF, I'd been at the World Bank, I'd been at the National Democratic Institute. I worked at human rights on, at an organization called Access Now, looking at human rights and technology. And all throughout all this time, I was really focused on a few things. I was looking at the impact of technology in our lives. I was looking at the ways in which communities were using technology to organize and how that affected their rights um, and their participation in democracy. Um, I was very interested in uh, questions of sort of open source and open culture. And so when I got a email from someone who was doing recruiting at the Wikimedia Foundation, I couldn't believe it. I was so excited because it felt like everything was just sort of leading up to that moment. You know, um, all this incredibly global movement, global community, all of these values that I feel so strongly about. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, it was it was like a dream job. I applied for it and I and then, you know, it took a while for them to get back to me. And I was like, oh, probably didn't get it. It's OK. And then um, when they called, I was like, oh. So excited. And so I moved to California and, you know, I'm still here. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's um, an interesting rundown on how you got to here. And then what could you possibly say uh, are the benefits derived through your journey in the movement so far? Um, I think the most amazing thing about this movement, I probably every Wikimedian who has been part of it feels the same way, is the way in which it has just made, first of all, I've learned so much. I mean, so much. We were watching a show the other day and they talked about Asturian miners, which is a, a region in Spain. And I was like, oh, I know. You know, and started talking all about what I knew about Asturias. And I was like, I would never have known that without knowing a bunch of Asturian Wikimedians, you know? So I've just learned so much from being with so many people. 
Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's, I, on, I mean, I'm incredibly proud of the work that we've all done together and the mission that we've all achieved and how Wikimedia is as strong in some ways as it has ever been. But I think most important to me is all the relationships. It's getting to know people from all over the globe. It's feeling like I have lifelong friends. It's feeling as though my understanding of the world is so much richer because I get to talk to you and I, I know what you're interested in and I know what matters to you and I know what's going on in Nigeria. And this is yeah. the sort of thing that just to me is, it's, it's the best part of the movement. Wow, that's, that's great to know. And um, you mentioned some achievements. What uh, can you say were the highlights of your tenure as the CEO of uh, Wikimedia Foundation and the things you were probably most proud of? Um, I think, I, I mean, I, I'm really, really proud of the Universal Code of Conduct and the fact that we all worked together as a movement to get that through. I know it hasn't been easy and I know that it's required a lot of discussion and I know it's brought people who didn't always agree into some difficult conversations and dialogue. Um, and you know, much of that wasn't even, I, I wasn't often in those conversations. So that's really work that the movement has done together. Uh, the other piece that I'm, I feel really proud of is the strategic direction for 2030 and how that process of having conversations really um, not only got us to something that I think is an aspirational strategic direction that really captures where we are as a movement right now, talking about issues of knowledge equity, thinking about the essential infrastructure of free knowledge for the future, but, but was a way in which we were very intentional about ensuring that members of our community from every community, from every part of the world, from all different language groups were well represented in the conversation and the ways in which I've seen that strength of representation turn into leadership of different communities at the global level. So we see African Wikimedians at every part of the conversation today in a way that we didn't five years ago, you know? And I think that that's true. I was talking to someone from um, Wikimedia Indonesia the other day, and it was the same observation I made to them was just, thank you so much for all of the work that you did to really bring your community together because I, I don't think we could imagine a Wikimedia of the next five years without Africans and without East Asians at the table in conversation, being very present in deciding how our future should be. And so I'm, I mean, I, I didn't do that work. You did that work, but I'm really, I, I certainly feel like the movement is a better place for that. Hmm. That's, that's really interesting to know. I mean, you mentioned um, the universal code of conduct and um, the movement um, strategy 2030. And to us, I, I think um, a, a lot of us could uh, actually agree that you were actively involved in the movement strategy uh, 2030. So yeah, <laughs> yeah yes, yes. I, I think uh, it's, it's just <laughs> profound. Your, your input was really profound. And really when you, I mean, if by um, 2030 and you look back, I mean, what do you hope to see in the future? in respect to the movement um, strategy? Yeah, well, I definitely hope that the code of conduct has a very positive impact on mm. people's experience in the movement. I hope that women, I hope that people from uh, communities that have felt excluded from Wikimedia, I hope people feel that they are welcome. And I hope that the movement itself takes pride in being a welcoming place. You know, I used to say, we're so good at spotting copyright violations. I want us to be as good at making Wikimedia a friendly space as we are about like ensuring that, you know, we respect intellectual property. So I still believe that. But I, I think, um, I mean, I have so many hopes, you know, I, I really hope that in 10 years time, people, the dream of that decentralized um, Wikimedia where people have power and agency over the movement and have resources yeah. in the communities that they work in is real. I'm very excited about some of the hub work. Uh, I realized I was talking the other day about, um, I learned that the, the Arabic Wikipedians user group is the first user group, is the most recent user group to have been created. 
And the reason that they created the user group is because it's meant to be the beginning of a hub for the Arabic speaking world. And so that's okay. that's really exciting. I'm excited to see what you know, the African community is going to do with this idea and how it, it might be specific to the needs of the African community. And, and also the African community is enormous. So it could be like eventually like West African, East African, South African, you know, so I don't mean to Southern African, not just South Africa, the country. Um, so I don't mean, you know, to, to say that there's not more opportunity there, but um, so that decentralization, that agency, that empowerment, that leadership from around the globe, uh, I think is so critical. I'd love to see the way in which our projects continue to thrive and evolve in different languages that have perhaps not been as robust in the in you know, in the past. But I also think another thing I'm really excited about. Sorry, I have so many things. Um, is the we when I joined the Wikimedia Foundation, there was this big debate about Wikipedia versus the other projects. And I don't hear that as much anymore. I hear people who are working actively on many other projects in you know, Wikimedia Commons, Wikidata, Wikisource. And I know we've got, we just launched Abstract Wikipedia. I am very excited for the way that this movement has moved to embrace the, this ecosystem of knowledge, because I think that really is so much representation of when we talk about the essential infrastructure, the essential support system of free knowledge. We're talking about Wikipedia, but we're also talking about so much more. So uh, those are just some thoughts. I, I could probably talk a lot, <laughs> but obviously, and uh, we 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 are really uh, happy to hear that um, there is so much hope. I mean, with all you have um, outlined, that's to say we possibly could be seeing this, God willing, and of course um, the UCOC getting um, implemented. Okay, um, throughout your tenure as the CEO of the Wikimedia Foundation, you've been visibly supportive of diversity and uh, inclusion. The first Wiki in Daba took place in 2014, and um, uh, Asav and um, Anasuya turned up. Your support for Africa's uh, Wikimedians has been evident time and time again, but especially when you attended the Wiki in Daba in Ghana in 2017, uh, Wiki in Daba 2018 in Tunisia, and uh, Wikimedia Cape Town in 2018. How was your experience? I mean, what are your memories for the time? So my biggest regret is that I didn't get to go to the last Wiki in Daba before the pandemic. Um, you know, because and then because we rescheduled uh, the one for Nigeria and then the pandemic happened. And so it's I, like I, I'm like pain in my heart that I didn't get to come. <laughs> um, I. <laughs> I mean, my experience, so I, I have to admit, I came into Wikimedia a total Africa partisan. I mm. um, had spent much time working with communities in different country, or different African countries in my previous jobs. And I just, I wanted to see, I, you know, if I'm being selfish, I just wanted to have the opportunity to be able to work with African communities again. But, but in right. reality, you know. I'm kidding. What I really wanted was that the movement be better, better represented in Africa. And I wanted Africa to be better represented in the movement. And so um, I think my impression has been and has been borne out is that really one of the things that Wikimedia needed to do was to, as a community and as a culture, and specifically the Wikimedia Foundation, was to work directly with African Wikimedians to understand what movement building in the African communities looks like and work with African Wikimedians who have been building movements for well before I joined the Wikimedia Foundation. You know, when I think about the fact that Wikimedia Ghana has been around for quite some time, really in terms of Wikimedians being active and present and engaged, what were the resources that they needed to continue to expand that work? We've seen this sort of like explosion of growth in you know Wikimedia Nigeria, the incredible um, rate of acceleration of user groups across the continent. So my impression has just been, you know, there is so much talent and so much enthusiasm and so much opportunity and so much you know future for Wikimedia in Africa and African Wikimedians in the movement as a whole. It's really about partnering with the broader movement. It's really about the Wikimedia Foundation being having humility and understanding that Africans need to lead in this work. And it's about ensuring that Africans are represented in all of the work for the future. So I want to see, for example, like no excuses. I want to see Africans on the board of the Wikimedia Foundation now, now. 
<laughs> like, like I want it. I want to see it. I think it is important. I want people to run for the next board elections, and I want to see Africans elected to the board of the Wikimedia Foundation. That's it. Like, wow, that's my, that's that's... my next priority. Like, no, no. <laughs> that's that's really um i mean that's not impossible to happen and no, uh it's not impossible at all it yeah will happen. <laughs> okay having uh recognized these um talents and um the volunteer force the enthusiasm coming from africa let's say um you have uh, a special chance to actually uh, say something nice what would you like to say to African Wikimedians, having recognized all these traits that they possess um, that are relevant to the movement? So one of the things that struck me when we started doing movement strategy was that we did some research. We're like, where are babies going to be born in the next 20 years? You know, wow. like, that's the all well, well, it's the only thing you can really predict, right? You can't really predict the future, but you can count babies. And um, the, num the population, the predictions for to today's predictions predict that 40 to, I think it was 42% of the planet will be African by the end of this century. So what I would say to the African community is like, this is your moment. <laughs> like, wow. You know, you are the future of this planet. You are the future of this community. You are the future of this movement. And I want to see that, like, let's lay the groundwork for that leadership. Let's ensure that you have the resources that you need. Let's be building okay. movement leaders. Um, but okay, that's all very, very ambitious. So um, for the moment, for the actual moment, I would say, hey, I hope you're taking care of yourself because this pandemic has been really hard for people. And it has been hard for our families. It has been hard for our mental health. It has been hard for the economic health. It has been hard for opportunity. And we don't necessarily know when it's gonna end and uncertainty is really tough. It's hard for everyone. Everyone on the planet struggles with uncertainty. We're humans, we're not good at it. I hope you're taking a deep breath. I hope you're staying in community. I hope you're supporting one another. I hope you're staying in touch. I hope you're finding ways to get outside and go for a walk and be stand in the sun and remember what joy feels like and find joy with the people who you love because that's what's mo so important. And all of the work of Wikimedia is super important, of course, and I hope you find joy in this community, but mostly what I want is people taking care of themselves because just this has been a really hard year for so many people, a really hard year. And there's a lot going on beyond just a global pandemic in people's lives. There's a lot going on around conversations around you know, democracy and our human rights and racial justice in the world. And I just really hope everyone's taking care of themselves. That's, that's what I really hope. Wow. That's, that's really um, personal. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that all the African Wikimedians who are connected to this broadcast actually appreciate these concerns and the uh, kind words coming from you. Thanks. So um, there is so much um, happening around um, things like the community board seats, like um, universal code of uh, conduct. I mean, what what can you suggest when it comes to such topics, especially as it pertains to the African um, Wikimedians? Yeah, I mean, I would be very interested in what the African Wikimedia community is talking about, about the universal code of conduct, for example because the African community is is an interesting community in that I think you said at the beginning, you got involved through the Igbo Wikipedia, is that right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. so there's, there's a, it's really interesting because the African Wikimedian community is very often you have Wikimedians who um, edit in African languages, you also have edit Wikimedians who edit in you know, European languages like English and French, um, or European colonialist languages probably. But the, so you're in, you're in often in multiple communities. And so you have more of a perspective, I think, on what works in large wikis and what works in younger, smaller wikis where my, I'm, I'm terrible. I don't speak enough languages. So, so it's very embarrassing, but it means that I don't have a lot of experience editing in smaller wikis. The only, wiki, my home wiki is English Wikipedia. And I know that that is a very different situation around how the code of conduct it will be applied, you know, what the various different enforcement mechanisms will be, you know, how community members are um, thinking of it, how, interpreting and adopting it and, and hold upholding it. Whereas I imagine smaller Wikipedias that are, are you know, fewer 
um, less history, perhaps, like less structure to, to sort of navigate, have more opportunity because it's a little bit more of a blank slate. And so I think there's a space to be really creative in that. And I think that there's an opportunity for the larger wikis to learn from the smaller wikis on what's going really well. And for communities that already know each other to use this as an opportunity to really shape the kind of community that they want to be. So that is sort of my impression of what the opportunities are with the code of conduct. Um, you know, I think for the, the board elections and I'm, I'm in the telegram channel for the, for the board elections, but I have to say, I haven't read all of it lately. So I'm not a hundred percent sure of, of all the like, ways in which it's, it's going forward. Uh, but I think it's the same thing that I said earlier. You know, when I was in as CEO, I was advocating at the board level for rep any, any reforms to the uh, electoral process that would ensure that we had better representation across the movement. Because the way that the election process has worked historically is that the um, elections, the direct elections have often been overweighted to people from large wikis. And so you end up with lots of Europeans, you often end up, not always, but you often end up with more men than women. Um, and I remember, you know, I know that there have been years that I've been here in which you've had members of, you know, Latin, uh, our Latin American community or our African community or Arabic speaking community run for the board and, and not really have a chance because they don't, aren't well known to these other, you know, larger communities, for example. Um, so I was very passionate about the need for the election process to ensure better representation, better opportunity, you know, the opportunity for candidates to uh, work in translation so that more people could were at, had access to their ideas and they were able to work in their own languages so they could feel comfortable and express okay. themselves most fully. Um, so I really hope that these reforms are ones that show up in this next election process, that we have a board that is more global in nature. It's already pretty global, but like it's a continuous process, you know? So I think we're, we're doing better and I wanna see that momentum continue. And as I said, I, I want to see African Wikimedians on the board. I think it's incredibly important and not just African Wikimedians. I, you know, I'm, I know I'm probably going to have Wikimedians from Africa, you know, listening today, but I also think it's, is it comedians from all of our uh, emerging communities? It's time for your representation. It's, it's really important. What's the song? It's time for Africa. Like, yeah, it's time. <laughs> Thanks for having um, that level of confidence in the African uh, community. It's 100%. well appreciated. Yes, it is. And uh, okay, so far we've heard about your journey, um, all the while you're in the movement. And uh, I know we've read your. Oh no, I think I lost this us. Oh, are you back? Uh oh. Well, we can take a commercial break. I'll take this opportunity to say the pillows behind me on the couch right here. I got those when I was in Cape Town uh, when we were there for Wikimania South Africa. So thank you for those. Uh, that was a great opportunity. <laughs> oh, hi, Isla. <laughs> hi, everyone. I'm sorry. I'm just going to leap in um, because Seslaus, it appears uh, his his uh, connection has uh, died. So uh, while he's um, reconnecting, I'm just going to leap in and say thank you. And I'm glad that you're showcasing the Cape Town, your Cape Town links. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so just to carry on where uh, Seslaus had um, left off, I think, um, I'm just sorry, I'm just trying to, to get back to, to his thing. Um, <laughs> We've been talking just a little bit about the code of conduct and the board, and then I wasn't actually sure where the question was going to go. I was very excited, though. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he was what where he was leading was that uh, he wanted to know if you had one message for Wikimedians, not just in Africa. I know that you've been very specific about Africa, but if you had one message for Wikimedians around the world, um, what would it be? Well. Um, 
Yeah, I don't. Oof, that's hard. Um, I, wrote really, I, <laughs> I, well, I wrote a really, I wrote a really long one. You know, uh, but um, we are going to, we've got a link to that, so we will be linking to your letter to us. So thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, and make it easy. <laughs> to, <laughs> what I'm referring to is, I, I for those who are watching, I wrote a goodbye, um, not goodbye. I mean, like see you around the wikis sort of letter uh, last week and shared it. And I think that. You know, there were there were sort of a few messages in that, which was that um, one is that I do think that the work that the Wikimedia community has done and continues to do is absolutely remarkable, um, and it is one of the proudest things that I've ever had the opportunity to be a part of. And I will always measure any future work that I do by and communities that I'm involved with by by how they compare it to the Wikimedia communities because this is just one of the most special places that I, and communities I've ever, ever been in. The, um, which is a call, I think, to this movement as well, to continue to really push to be the best version of the movement, uh, to be, as I said at the, you know, a moment ago, well, as welcoming as possible to newcomers, to really see the, expansion hey says last they glad you're back um, well, to see you. the <laughs> no no worries to see the expansion of the movement as something that makes us all stronger um to understand that we are you know i think you know this but stewards of something that is truly special in the world and that we have a multi-generational uh obligation to protect it and and to advance our work over the years to come, um, to remain really steadfast in the values. I think it is, we have at times felt pulled in different directions as a movement. And one of the things that I have seen, I, I believe is that, um, you know, in, in, the last in the last 20 years, when I joined the foundation in 2014, there was a little bit of, of, of a sense sometimes that maybe Wikimedia um, wasn't as, as like interesting or exciting as other sort of sites on the internet because it hadn't changed much. And today in 2021, I think the p reason that Wikimedia is so beloved and respected is because it hasn't changed much because it's still very core to those original values of independence and integrity and openness. And so mm -hmm. as much as I ask you to, as a movement, to continue to evolve and welcome new people in and be welcoming um, and, and to grow globally uh, and understand more broadly our conceptions of what knowledge is and can be, I would also say, you know, don't go too far from those founding values because they're so, so important. You know, uh, our colleague Kim Gill at the Wikimedia Foundation always would say that we're a, um, a movement with a, with a foundation, not a foundation with um, with yeah. a community, and I think that that is that is true to who we are, and I I want to see this movement continue to lead and guide uh, wherever the movement goes first or goes next. Okay, that's um, interesting. Um, of course, <laughs> I like that word the the foundation within a foundation or with a foundation. I don't know how you actually said it, but yes, that um, would uh, mean being as open as possible, but still not lose the value that we actually hold um, to the commitment of the movement. Thank you. So finally, um, I mean, this um, session, I, I, I really wish it could last um, beyond um, one hour or even two hours, three hours. We are so sad to actually see you go. This is our last question, but really, uh, what is next for you? <laughs> You should have seen that coming. <laughs> I should have seen it coming. Everyone asks yeah. me this question. <laughs> you know, I'm not actually sure. I think I'm, so I, I, just some very personal sort of basics. Like I'm, I've been living in San Francisco. I moved here for, for Wikimedia. Um, and I ended up spending seven years here, which is not what I ever planned. You know, I'm sure, oh, wow. you know, says us, you have a family, you have parents, you know, I like, I left my hometown. I moved across, across the continent. And, and I think it's time to go home. So I'm, I'm moving home uh, back to uh, New York, which is where my family is all uh, based and around. Um, and then 
I, I'm, I'm debating whether I have it in me to write a book. I know that's like a thing that lots of Wikimedians have done. Um, you know, Andrew Lee was here at the very beginning when we talked and I know he's written a book about Wikimedia. Like I, I don't know how many books wow. the world needs about Wikimedia, but I'm tempted. <laughs> um, and then af after that, I think, you know, I'd, I'd like to, uh, to find something that is an, another, someone said to me the other day, they're like, you're not looking for a job, you're looking for a mission. I was like, oh yeah, that's yeah. it, right? And so I think that the mission that I feel very strongly and very passionately about beyond the free knowledge mission that we've worked together on for all these years is really thinking about um, our climate and you know the future of our planet and our role as humans in um, our responsibility to safe to safeguard our, our um, natural environment for the future and how we live sustainably, uh, is that even possible? Um, and so I, those are the questions that I'm very interested in and that would be something I'd be passionate to work on, but you know, uh, I'm gonna take, it, gonna take the summer off and, and explore and really try to think about that, so. That's, That's really I don't nice. Have, I, don't have, like, the... I don't have a real plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the idea of um, writing a, a, a book about Wikipedia, that's really nice because those who had written would have written from their perspective. And then you yourself, you've had yours in the communications and then the CEO. So we would love to see all that. We love, they, they, they can never be enough book written about the um, Wikipedia movement. So yes, we, we're hoping to see that book. And um, though I know we African Wikimedians were waiting to hear you were going to move to Africa, but I mean, there's no such luck. Since you're moving back to New York, we will still be connecting virtually. And um, yes, thank you. Thank well, you. Uh, well, been... says us, oh, if, you okay. can, if, you, if you find me a job, I, you know, I'm, I'm very happy to move to Africa. <laughs> I don't know about a job, but perhaps a mission. Yes, please. We'll be glad to have you. Yeah, a mission. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay. Okay. Um, we will be taking um, some questions from the audience. Uh, Katrin, if you wouldn't mind, um, there is one from sure. Jan. Mm -hmm. Jan Ainali said, um, which are the areas where you think the Wikimedia Foundation can do a better work in being an open and transparent organization? Hmm. Jan, thank you for the question. It, I, wish that, I wish that Jan was almost with us to talk because I, I would be so interested in understanding his impressions of where the problems are, because I think that I hear this often from community members and it's not that I necessarily disagree. It's that everyone has a sort of different perspective on what they're looking for from an organization. So I actually, um, I think I'll, I'll say something very controversial in the Wikimedia movement, which is I actually think transparency is a little overrated for an organization like the Wikimedia foundation. I actually think, and the reason I say that is because we could release, all of the planning documents for the year and we could release all of the budget information for the year and i don't know that it would actually mean as much to people as being able to explain very clearly what it is we're trying to do why we are trying to do it how much it's going to cost and how long it's going to take because all of the data and documentation of the wikimedia foundation at this point because it is 500 people it's so large um, I get lost in it sometimes, you know, like it's hard even internal to the foundation to sometimes find the information you're looking for. It's a little bit like that joke, like, you know, it's on meta, right? Okay, it's on meta, but no one can find it. <laughs> and so that that doesn't make it easy just because it's transparent for people to understand, you know, where the opportunities are, or how to improve engagement. And so I'm really feeling very excited about the fact that we have uh, just this past year, right before I stepped down, we um, put resources into hiring someone whose entire job it is, is movement communications. His name is Mayor Patel. And his role is really to think about how the foundation communicates with the communities, and I very specifically with, not to. So it's both directions so that people ha can find the information that they need so they feel like they know what's going on. Um, I think also, you know, if I'm being honest, Jan, 
I wasn't always as good as this as I wish I had been. I think that um, in the past years, when I was when I would spend time with communities at events like Indaba or Wiki Arabia or events um, like IberoConf, those were opportunities to talk to movement uh, part, you know, to parts of the movement and to share what was going on. But back during sort of normal day to day, week to week, I wasn't writing about this work and communicating it directly to the movement. So I'd love to see the new CEO make sure that they are being really thoughtful about how to communicate their priorities, how to give people updates consistently. Um, and, and, you know, that's hard. It's a, it's a busy job, but there's ways in which you can and build that infrastructure, including maybe just like a blog, you know, every other week. It's not so hard to sit down for a, a half an hour and talk about what you're working on. Um, so I, I do think that that communication piece is really important. I also think that um, there's an opportunity for the board to communicate uh, more frequently with with the movement as a whole. Um, I, I think there, you know, the movement has, has gotten larger and it's a very different world than it was when the board was first set up, where many times, you know, there were 10 people and, and we were a smaller movement and it was just sort of easier and everything was on mailing lists. I'd love to see the board be really thoughtful about, you know, what does it mean to update the community on a, on a regular basis about what they're working on and what their priorities are and you know what their agenda is for the year, how that's going. Um, I think that builds trust and I, and I think trust is such an important piece of how we work together. You know, we talked about it a little bit. Um, I talked about it when I spoke at Stockholm, that trust is the thing that, that as we grow as a movement is going to be increasingly important as a, as a means of cohesion across all of the work that we do. Okay. Ian, I hope that answers your question. So the area of, uh, for the improvement is definitely from the communications and building trust. And another one from Stella. Stella says, um, you definitely have been a good role model to some of us. I mean, all of us. Thank you for the awesome work done. We would be waiting for the book. Oh, this is actually a compliment, Catherine. <laughs> Thank you, Stella. <laughs> so I'm, not the one, I'm not the only one waiting for the book. So. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, so, so I'm curious, how did you become a Wikimedian? If we wait, I'd love other questions from the audience, but in, if we don't get them, I'm just going to start asking you questions. So, okay, okay. Why we wait for the questions? Uh, for me, it was um, in 2018. And first of all, I studied foreign languages. I majored in French and um, did a minor and elective in um, German. So by 2016, I moved to Abuja for a, a job and I ran into um, an old um, co colleague of mine. By oh no, did we lose this last again? Okay, well, we're gonna see if um, we can get him back. <laughs> Sorry about that, he's frozen again. Uh, Nigeria and its um, communications problems, we all have troubles, I think. Um, right, I'm just having a look to see if there are other questions. Um, so there's, uh, Winnie has, has also said another, um, has also mentioned uh, just about, I think it's more of an invitation to go to <laughs> Kenya. So <laughs> I think you've got a lot of, you will be fielding a lot of job offers or mission offers after this. Um, so thank you very much. Um, I don't know if there are any more questions. I wonder if you would like to, um, if you have anything you would like to 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 finish with and then we just have a few um kind of like news items to go through for people um across africa to and the movement so um while seslas is <laughs> reconnecting i don't know if you have a something something else that you don't feel has been said yet or um i actually am curious what do you have thoughts on when the next indaba might be or is there any idea about oh Hey, so, so, so I was just asking uh, Isla when the next Indaba might be, if you had any ideas about, about that. But I, I actually still want to hear how you you'd said you just moved to Abuja and you ran into a colleague. Yes. And that's <laughs> I ran into a, a, a colleague and then she was doing this um, Wikipedia thing. 
so she invited me over um to the editathon event i went i liked it why because they were doing it in Igbo, and of course my mom happens to be an Igbo teacher till date so i enjoyed the whole thing and um subsequently i asked her oh what is this really about i would like to know more and be actively a uh, part of it so she then uh, told me okay i might need to um, create an account so that whatever edit i make would count etc and she just roped me in all the way and since then it's been from one revelation to the other and it's been nice it's been awesome being part of um, the open uh, movement and um, i don't regret it one bit in fact as i'm talking to you those i've shared the experience with they're just queuing up to you know get the 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 best knowledge it has to offer and it's it's surely going to be awesome having um new people coming through me knowing that oh i tested this and i was able to preach to them the gospel of the open movement and they accepted it. so <laughs> that is wonderful i love that your mom is a eva teacher and that you were um you studied languages that must must run in the family yes it does actually <laughs> it does well i'm so glad that you're part of the movement thank you for being here the pleasure is all mine and um thank you too so um there is a question coming up from botch how would you like to see the growth of diversity in the next five years in the moment mm. um I mean, I think diversity, you know, diversity is sort of a, a, a funny, a funny word because oftentimes people use it in different ways. In the United States right now where I live, it, it very often is used to refer to racial diversity. Um, but of course, diversity in, in a global context can mean something very different. It, it can mean sort of just the heterogeneous nature of a, com a composed group, which just means there's lots of different people represented, you know? Um, I really hope that the Wikimedia Foundation, sorry, the Wikim well, I hope the Wikimedia Foundation continues to grow in terms of its global representation. So I don't know that that, that means like grow in terms of number of people, but I hope that as the organization hires more people or, you know, hires new people as people continue to move and uh, on in their careers that that is continues to be a very global representation. I think it's so important right now. There are people in about 40 countries around the globe, but the majority are still American um, or still American European. And I, I just would love to see that representation be much more aligned with the world as a whole. And I think that's my same hope for the Wikimedia movement is that, you know, over time that the entirety of the world is represented um, in the movement in a way that is, you know, relative to or proportional to the world. And so we see this when we talk about women editing Wikipedia, it's never, I want, you know, we are very always careful to say, we don't want women to edit just on things about women. We want women to edit on whatever they want to edit on because sort of over many, many people that works out to have, to be sort of representative of every type of interest. And I think <clears throat> we'd like to see, I'd like to see, that also to be true for the, you know, to the, for the future. And so when I think about that, the densest, I, I remember reading at one point, um, the densest concentration of people on the planet, sort of if you were to like drop a pin in the middle of the globe or, and draw a circle around it and try to get, have as many people in that circle as possible is actually in South Asia. And right now we have a pretty active South Asian community, but it is not, an enormous South Asian community it doesn't represent um, in an equivalent way the number of South Asian languages or you know, people that there are on the planet. And I already said this for the African community, I'd like to see the African community grow really significantly as well, um, in not just uh, in terms of user groups and countries represented, but in languages represented and for those languages to be you know, robust and thriving. Um, so. My hope, Butch, is that we see representation of everyone in the movement as contributors to the movement, but also really important to me, and I said this at the beginning, is in movement leadership. I want to see movement leaders 
representative of the globe. And so I've mentioned the board, but there's many other ways in which people can show up to be a movement leader and not just at the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, I really hope that the Global Council is an opportunity for that representation from around the movement. Uh, I think there's so much opportunity and I, I just want to again reiterate that this is, this is your movement uh, and uh, it is sort of up to us as to what it is that we, that we make of it. And so um, I will always be on, on the side of, of African comedians, of emerging communities and continuing to grow and have their voices be, be heard and be strong. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I think there's another question from Habib and Kandi. Oh, yes, from Habib. Habib says, um, if you're uh, Wikimedia Foundation CEO for one more day, Hey. What decision would I make? I mean, that's a tough one. Um, what would you do? What decision would you take? Hmm. What would I do? Um, I think I'd really have to think about this, but uh, I think I would. Um, it would probably be something related to movement strategy and it would probably be around setting up a very clear set of resources for the development of the Global Council and the Movement Charter and ensuring there was a plan there that was very clear to the movement. Um, and I know that's counterintuitive because, you know, ideally we'd plan it together, but I would just want to make sure that that was something that, because I know there's some questions now as to how that proceeds. And so um, that to me would be the, the, the thing I would do. I think that's so important for the future. I really want to see that work done. Um, so yeah, I would, I'd probably focus on that. And then I don't know. I mean, like everyone gets a puppy. I, I, sorry, that's a silly expression, but <laughs> I don't think everyone wants a puppy. But <laughs> okay, for whatever reason you might want that, that's nice. And then from Candy, <laughs> Candy says, "What has been your proudest moment as part of the Wiki family?" I mean, I think this goes beyond the um, initial question of. Um, being the CEO. So this is like yeah. the Wiki family in entirety. My proudest moment. Um, I, I, I mean, honestly, like on some level, it's actually just being here. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really, truly in this moment, because it means that we're still going to be able to do things together as a community, you know, I'm transitioning out of this role, but like, we're still gonna be able to work together. It represents, you know, success. when did you become a Wikipedian? In the last five years? 2018 does, yes, I think. Yeah, yeah so five years ago. So you are, if we like break, you know, break up the, your, the newest 25% of a Wikimedians, you know? So like, you represent the future, where we're gonna go. Um, it is, I'm, you know, it's amazing to see that the, that like, it's so exciting to have the vlog for Wiki Africa. I, I think this is like, I'm proud of everything. I, I, I just am right. always, you, I just always smile when I'm with Wikimedians. I just, am so happy. So, um, you could pluck me, pluck almost any day out of the last seven years. And I would probably have a reason to smile and be really proud of it. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm really proud of the code of conduct. I'm really, really proud of us as a movement. It's not proud of me, it's I'm proud of us as a movement. It was hard to get there, but we got there. And I'm very proud of the fact that we can now say, that, say to the world that these are our values and this is what we're focused on. So maybe that, you know, and I'm proud of movement strategy too. Like, I, you know, lots of, lots of good things. So anyway, but he, yeah, I don't have a one. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Candy. <laughs> That's understandable. I mean, when you've had fun all through, it gets difficult to pick, so. Um, so we have 
<laughs> we have one last question to take from um, Winnie. Winnie says, uh, what's your call to action for women and girls as far as ending gender inequalities and breaking the glass ceiling goes? Yeah, um, it's to lift other women up with you. I think that I, um, I think women are, are told very often, at least in, in the US where I grew up, that you can, you can do anything, you can be anything. And then they go out, we go out into the world and society actually doesn't, <laughs> doesn't want to make that space. And so um, my call for women is, and it's, I, I think about this for myself too, is when you get to positions where you are in power, whether that's you know, small power, big power, make sure that you're bringing other women with you and make sure that you're looking out for other women. Make sure that as you move forward, you bring other people along with you. I think that's an act of solidarity and it's what I believe we all have an obligation to one another to do. I, I'm sure there are times when I should have done it more and it is a commitment that I have made to myself to do it as we go forward into the, as I go forward in my life. And so that would be my call to action for women is to lift other, other women up with you. And I think it's a, it's the same thing that you could ask of everyone is to lift other people up with you. I think it's, it's really how we build community together. Um, I thank you for asking that question, Winnie. Like I, I say that because I also don't want to tell you or anyone else that you know you can you can go do it and you can break gender inequality on your own like it, it's going to have to be a communal communal effort and the best way to do that is by knowing that you bring you know you bring your your entire community with you so thank you it's a great question okay oh caroline still okay let's just take one more question for the road catherine if you wouldn't mind she says yeah, uh, okay you have passionately served the Wikimedia community for the period of your leadership. Now, how can the Wikimedia community serve you? Oh, oh thank you, Karen. <laughs> um, that's so nice. I would say with, with friendship, with friendship, you know, I would, I really hope to be able to go to the first Wikimania that happens after this pandemic. Um, I want to remain in, in contact and in communication and to remain in friendship with the comedians because, you know, I think I uh, was saying this with us when you dropped off, like, I feel like I have friends and a community now everywhere in the world I could possibly go. And that to me is something I never want to lose. And I just, I hope we can, we can stay there. Um, I have one question for you, Sislaus, before we, I, and that's it. Last one. Okay. How do I, how do I get to stay? What's the best place to go so I can continue to know what's happening in the Afro -Wic African Wikimedian community? How do I keep up on what is going on? What's the good news? That's easy. I mean, we just launched uh, the Wiki Africa Hour. And yeah. here, henceforth, this is where you're getting the latest and the hottest gist as long as African uh, Wikimedians are concerned. They update the whatever that is happening in each user group will always bring um, a monthly update on the monthly uh, vodcast that we hope to be having henceforth on this platform and just key in um, whenever we have the schedule for the month and you'll get a full download of all that is happening across the African Wikimedia community. I can do that. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity and for the time. And thank you to everyone for watching and for the questions. And thank you for all of the joy um, for the last seven years. And I really look forward to being, as I said, in friendship with so many Wikimedians into the future. Thank you to Catherine. The, the pleasure is ours. Thank you for coming. And uh, I know I speak everybody's mind when I say we are extremely happy that you were able to make it and uh, address the respective um, questions that we asked. That was really, really nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. I'll see you, I don't know, in Abuja? <laughs> sure, I'll be here next waiting time. for you. Yeah, next time, whenever. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, I guess you guys have the news to do, right? Yes, please, we do. Oh. Thank you, everyone, uh, for your time and uh, patience for 
being here so far. I know we all enjoyed ourselves with uh, um, the whole interaction, the whole um, discussion. It's been awesome. I personally have um, gotten much more insight than I had before. So thanks. And now let's just go to the news so that you get to know the latest happenings in the uh, Wikimedia uh, African uh, communities. First, I would like to let you know that um, the deadline for Wikilove Africa is coming up on 30th of April. Uh, this is to say you have about um, seven days to upload your entries so that um, it would count towards the contest and being um, considered. This time we just uh, made sure or we went, went ahead to, 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 to make sure that you had a guideline on how to make your images or videos useful to Wikipedia articles. Secondly, I would like to let you know that um, the Wikimedia uh, Planning Committee, they've made us know that this year's one is going to be a virtual event. And as such, the organizing committee is seeking ideas on entertainment and swag for the event. So in case you have um, suggestions, by the end of this, I will be putting all the links for the news on the meta page for Wiki Africa Hour. So you could just go there and um, get a read for yourself. And of course, click on the links um, to be able to get the full gist. So thirdly, I would like to let you know that the Wikipedia Pages Wanting Photos campaign is um, coming up. Um, the call for participation uh, for the campaign will be open from 1st of May 2021 to 14th of May 2021. And uh, of course, it was a huge success last year that six uh, Wikimedia athletes participated uh, and over 90 articles in so if you want to be the part of the greater impact, I believe the campaign will make this year, just uh, make sure you check our Wiki Africa Hour meta page to visit the link of the Wikipedia pages wanting photos. And then uh, fourthly, I would like to let you know that the resolution about the board election has actually um, made it known that there are number number of seats uh, that are vacant, uh, vacant and to be filled, actually six. And then um, you probably know that um, there was a discussion on uh, quota system idea, but the discussion didn't uh, hold water as the idea was uh, discouraged. And then the timeline uh, call for candidates will be opening on June 8th. So in case um, we have potential candidates amongst ourselves who are aspiring to um, participate in the election for the board seats, you can um, go to the meta page of Wiki Africa Hour and you would um, see the link to redirect and uh, follow up on the respective steps that you need to take. Uh, the African month on French Wikipedia is coming up in May, and that will be the third edition. Uh, this, of course, um, will be in relation to Africa Day on 25th of May. And then um, they are looking for participants uh, as it pertains to the event. And of course, currently there are, there's need for volunteers or for organizers and members of the jury. So you can also um, go to our meta page for Wiki Africa Hour after this to get more updates. Then the Wiki for Human Rights uh, movement is actually um, an article writing drive. Uh, for this year's zone, there are 20, over 20 countries that are participating. There's Morocco, there's Uganda, there's Tunisia, there's Egypt, there's Ubu. Uh, I don't know who else that is participating, but whatever info you, you would need will be on our Wiki Africa Hour meta page so that you know how you can um, get to participate. Thank you. Does anybody have um, maybe comments to make? If you maybe have um, any updates we might have um, missed. If not, we'd like to let you know that this is going to continue. The Wiki Africa Hour vodcast is a monthly uh, vodcast that is for African community. The African um, community. And then, as such, you guys should determine who comes as a guest and uh, what you would like to see. Um, suggestions can be made on our meta page for the Wiki Africa Hour 
on ideas, issues you would like uh, to be discussed. And maybe if you want us to bring uh, a guest on the podcast, you can actually um, list that there and we'll do just that. And please, to make sure you don't miss out on any of our events, you, will, you just have to um, sign up on our um, YouTube channel so that whatever event we have coming up on the podcast or every other related event, you will get notifications for that. Thank you so much for your time. Um, if you have um, any other thing you may have missed, maybe you didn't join us early, we'll be putting the record link on the meta page. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Andrew, for your help. You've been um, amazing. I mean, the the short notice, and then you still put through for us. That's really, um, I mean, being our brother skipper in the movement, Andrew. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you so much. We appreciate you for your time. The honor is ours. And um, we hope to see you maybe in May so that you can get the recent updates from me, just like you asked. So, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Please remember to subscribe on our YouTube channel, Wiki Africa. You can also follow us on uh, Facebook, Wiki Africa, to get uh, recent updates on whatever events we have coming up especially the vodcast is going to be monthly so please feel free go to our, our meta page wiki africa hour so i could drop ideas on things you would like us to bring on the vodcast issues that might be bothering you you know that you like discuss op op openly on the vodcast we are actually open to search thank you so much thank you <laughs> This episode of Wiki Africa Hour was hosted by Seslas Obanaya. Let us know what topics you want to discuss and join us next month on the same channels. Subscribe to the Wiki in Africa YouTube channel.